Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays, and we're gonna be taking out a whoa, 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 whoa! Stop that! Shh. Getting weird visual glitches. This thing doesn't want to behave. Anyways, we're taking out the LA-160. The LA-160 is going to be a tier 9 Russian aircraft coming off of the Levechkin line. And I actually really like the Levechkin line. They kind of feature a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none style of gameplay that I can appreciate. Uh, what do we got? We got a human and a... Ground attack, or we'll, we'll go this way. So as a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, you'd think that that would mean that we're kind of limited in our capabilities, but what it actually allows us to do is to be able to have a lot more tricks up our sleeve. Like, there's a lot more situations that we can find ourselves in and be relatively successful. So I'm not going to be the best altitude fighter, but I can play the role if need be to go after some of these heavy air defense aircraft. Oh, come on. We got a bomber over here as well. I want to kill this guy. Now we're going to go for... We're going to go for the heavy. Okay, I should be able to stick with this guy. We got an interesting gun arrangement on this aircraft. It's going to be two 30 millimeter cannons. We'll do that and keep that heavy on them. And they have a pretty decent rate of fire, but it's going to take quite a few upgrades to get here. From the previous aircraft, the LA-9, you're going to feel like you're downgrading because that aircraft featured... Come on, man, you can get him. Featured... Four 23 millimeter cannons. You're only going to get two on this one. Eventually upgrading to pretty slow rate of fire 37s. And then eventually getting the option to upgrade to these 30s. That, like I mentioned, have a pretty decent rate of fire. Uh, lots of planes with air-to-air -air rockets coming at me. I should be able to dogfight with these guys. Like I said, we're kind of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. So, I can dogfight with the multi-rolls. If I find myself up against a true turn fighter and I don't want to be in that engagement, I can go ahead and burn away from those targets most of the time. Oh, come on. Get out of here. And again, if I need to, I can get up to altitude and play the altitude fighter if need be. That's the human right there. Let's... What else is over here? Jawa. I can actually outturn a Jawa, which is saying something. Don't let... You, you got four of those. I don't like it. No, sir. Don't like it one bit. There we go. That's the human-controlled aircraft. He's in an altitude fighter. We can actually outturn him. There we go. There's a P-51. We've got a 9.3 second turn time, so we can outturn all the multi-rolls, all the altitude fighters. Yeah, I would have been stealing it anyways. Yeah, that, that maneuverability. And the airspeed. Like, look how quickly we're able to kick the speed up on this thing to come in for an intercept. Try and get these guys off of our air defense aircraft. There we go. <clears throat> Mastering 30 millimeter cannons is a bit of a chore. And I'll be the first to admit, I had a bit of a tough time with this aircraft initially. And we're actually going too fast to engage this bat wing. Uh, there we go. Let's go grab a little wrench. We're going to need that. There's a bunch of aircraft inbound to this position. 
We're pretty good at being an ambush predator too, so if there's somebody up high, we can go and grab them. Su Nine's over here. Doesn't look like he's interested in me. He may have been dropping his bombs. Nice. There's the F-94. It's weird that the multi-roll's way up high, but the heavy is down low. Yeah, he's pretty much done. There we go. Just gotta be patient with it. The high rate of fire is fairly forgiving. So we just need to get those bursts out. What is that, the Jawa? Yeah, we can, we can do this. Like I mentioned, we've got good maneuverability. It's not the best, but it doesn't need to be in this game because we're not going to be going up against all MiG-19s or all MiG-30s or whatever, or Yak-30s. We're not going to be going up against all them. We're going to go up against a mix of different aircraft, and we're a viable threat to all of them. One of the things I've always had a problem with with turn fighters is that I felt like I was struggling to do anything to help my team out when we got towards certain parts of the match where there might be like one bomber left or something like that that we need to get. Alright, is that the human ground attacker? Look at this damage output. Here we go. Just picked up raid one. And I really, I, I just love the LA line so much more than like my, my Yaks. So like I, like my Yak 15, I think is a solid platform. But if you were to ask me to choose between my Yak-30 or my LA-15, I tell you the LA-15 all day. Just because it it's always useful. It always has, it's always doing something that's gonna be super helpful to the team. Just like right now, we're trying to just eliminate targets to the best of our ability. A little upsetting that we are running out of. Uh oh, yeah, I just hit Alt-Tab. We may run out of sights. Picked up an ace, that's good. I mean, good for me, not good for the team necessarily. Oh, come on. I just need to get this one guy. There we go. Oh, that's the I-220. Oh, wow. You got a hit. He's trying. Got one hit point. We can't afford to let him even breathe on us right now. There is a wrench over here. There isn't many aircraft left, but they are going to get us right now just through sheer capture. Man, that stinks. Spent a lot of time over the airfield, but I had high hopes that we would have been able to do something more effective here. Oh, well. Is he even here? Yeah, he is. The enemy has control of all 
Ah. <laughs> that stinks. That stinks. You know what? Can't win them all. And I'm okay with that. Because this is a review of the aircraft's capabilities, not necessarily my own. I did not read the map properly. I spent way too much time at the airfield. And I think I just got a little bit kill hungry. Plus, I mean, I mean, can you blame me? Look at that. Anyways, so let's go back to the hangar. We'll talk a little bit more about the LA line and why I like it so much. Uh, I think it just, it boils down to having more tools in the tool bag. It's not like World of Tanks where it's all about uh, either you're the fastest or you're the most heavily armed or you're the most heavily armored and you kind of want to play to that strength and a jack of all trades tends to fall behind in most of those engagements. Same thing with like World of Warships. You better have a good niche because that's going to make the vehicle one more fun to play and it's going to make it uh, much more of a contributor in its particular role. Now, for this aircraft, though, it finds itself in a very unique tree, a unique portion of the tree. This is going to be the mid-altitude fighters. Now, we could argue the Spitfire fighters are mid-altitude, but the way that they play is more like a turn fighter that can go up to higher altitude. It just, they just don't have the speed. You get a little bit of that with the attacker and with the Swift, especially the Swift as an altitude fighter, if you ask me. But... This is going to be a mid-altitude fighter. You also get a mid-altitude fighter, in my opinion, when it comes to the Ki-162s. Both the Ki-162-1 at Tier 9 and the 3 at Tier 10. The guns are going to deter a lot of people, though, having 230s. But when it comes to this line, you are going to see a perpetual niche that these aircraft all satisfy. They are going to have good airspeed availability. They're going to have... Pretty decent maneuverability, decent altitude performance. But that means that I can use those strengths to overcome other threats. I'm not going to be able to outmaneuver a Yak-19. There's just no way. I mean, this guy's got an 8.4 second turn time. I'm just not going to be able to do it. But I can outperform him in altitude and I can outperform him in airspeed, and I especially can outperform him with overall firepower. So I can use those tactics against that plane, but then if I'm going up against uh, like an F6U, the F6U, I just need to get him down to lower altitude into, into my regime because his turn time is going to be an 11.2 compared to my 9.3. So I'll be able to turn with this guy. I'll be able to outturn the BVP-212. If we were to go up, uh, we'll even pull up a tier 10, the Jawas over here. These guys are looking at a 10, or a, sorry, a 9.8 second turn time, uh, you know, unspecialized. And we're currently unspecialized in our tier 9 LA-160. And it's it's the whole tech tree plays like this. I mean, I've got the LA-9 as well, uh, and I also got the LAG-3, but these guys are all going to have similar type of performances. Uh, if we were to actually put the right pilot in here, boop, you'll see that we've got a 9.5 second turn time. The 9.5 second turn time will allow me to be able to take advantage against those altitude fighters. But when it comes to climb rate, I've got a stellar climb rate, I've got a decent altitude performance, and I've got great airspeed. And the firepower, again, is nothing to scoff at. We're talking about 423s on this bird. And when you get to the LA-15, the LA-15 has the exact same guns as the Yak-30. The LA-15... Where are you, buddy? Boom. The LA-15, exact same gun armament. 510 damage per second. And 510 damage per second. 323 millimeters. They're just going to be very consistent in the way that they operate. And again, you're looking at great airspeed, great maneuverability, well, really decent maneuverability, and then great altitude performance. You know, kind of like multi role altitude performance. So, with all these tools in our tool bag, I found that these aircraft really fell naturally into my play style. I tended a lot towards multi-role aircraft just because I saw them as a challenge, but once I figured out how to fly those aircraft, 
I was used to operating in an environment where I had to really choose my fights and I had to know exactly what the enemy was capable of and then choose tactics against him. And there are times with a multi-role that you're just not going to win. I'm not going to win against an altitude fighter that's come down from altitude to chase me unless I can get some help. These guys are going to be a multi-role player's dream aircraft line because it's going to allow you to fly with much of the same tactics you've learned with the multi-roles, but now you're not stuck when the altitude fighters come down. You have the opportunity to turn the tables on them, and you've got the firepower to really bring it to bear as well. So, yeah, that's that's me getting off of my... I'll get off my, my podium right here, but yeah, this is the LA-160, and I think the whole line is a great line, and it's an unsung hero. I think it's a hidden gem, and if you guys are big into multi-rolls and you like that style of play, that style of flight, I think you'd be surprised what these have to offer your already adapted play style. So, hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this aircraft with me, and even though that was a loss, I still think it was a pretty stellar example of what this aircraft is capable of. Uh, you know, maybe it's capable of more and more capable hands that are paying attention to minimap. But anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.